welcome back to Combat Mission Fortress Italy, where we're pushing forward with the Panzers. In the last mission, we punched through an American infantry force between the Sealy and Kilore rivers. Now we've reached the base of the corridor between those rivers, and we need to cross the Kilore before we can plunge into the Allied beachhead. The river itself is a pretty substantial obstacle. My vehicles can only cross it at two points a bridge in the centre of the map, and a ford off to the right. This restricts my options, but at the same time it does somewhat simplify my potential courses of action. The terrain on my side of the river is similar to that of the last mission, open farmland with walls, ditches and a few orchards. The riverbank itself is heavily wooded, then the fields slope up to some high ground. From left to right up there we have a villa, an orchard, a crossroads and then a wooded ridge. This is where the objectives are and they correspond to the ground that controls the crossing points. This is where the enemy is likely to be. Thankfully, according to the briefing, they are not in good shape. The American defenders consist of pretty much everything that they can get their hands on. Survivors from the action further up the corridor are mixed in with improvised infantry units made from field artillery and rear area units that really aren't supposed to find themselves on the front line. So although they do occupy some pretty good ground, and there is also apparently an enemy infantry platoon in the orchard just up ahead to complicate matters, the thrust from the briefing here is that these troops are not high quality and similar to the Americans in the last mission, they should crumble if they get smacked hard enough. The flip side is that as the Americans in the beachhead react, our force is attracting increasing amounts of artillery fire. This is a much smaller map than the last one with some significant bottlenecks where I could potentially get hung up and present a juicy target. I'm going to have to keep the momentum up and really force those crossing points when the time comes. To do this I have a lot of firepower. Starting off on map, I've got a Panzer Grenadier Company Minus, so two platoons and the weapons platoon, all mounted in 251s, plus a five tank platoon of Panzer IV H Earlies, and an FO with two three gun sections of 105mm Wesps on call. At the five minute mark, I'll be getting another tank platoon and the Company HQ group, then after ten minutes, a platoon of Stugs will be along, plus the surviving Stummel from the last mission, and a platoon of Pioneers in half tracks. So I've got plenty of mobility and plenty of firepower. Time is an issue, though. There are only 35 minutes on the clock, so I need to overwhelm the enemy quickly. The plan then is pretty simple. My main initial concern is dealing with any defenders in the close edge of the woods on the high ground. That whole area is a likely spot for the enemy mainline resistance, and particularly any anti-tank guns that are going to be overlooking my approach. So I'm going to start by dropping one of the 105mm sections on either side of the main road to try and destroy or suppress them. I'm going to use the 81mm mortars to give the close-in enemy platoon in the auction a quick hammering, then keep them on hand for my FO to use the call-in smoke when I move on the bridge. While I'm using the Panzer IVs to shoot up anything vaguely threatening, one of the Panzer Grenadier platoons will move up and clear the auction. By the time they're done with that, my reinforcements should have arrived and I should have an improved idea of where to focus my attack. The first thing I want to do as the wesps and mortars open fire is shoot up the villa. That looks like a prime location for Americans, so the Panzer IVs give it an early hammering before they start to roll forward. They quickly spot some enemy infantry in the edge of the orchard and open up, inflicting some casualties and driving them off. Sending an infantry team forward on foot is enough to bait more enemy infantry into revealing their positions. I want to move fast, so I'm willing to take some risks to find targets for my tanks. Soon, they're treating the buildings on the edge of the orchard to 75mm HE shells. Even this doesn't feel fast enough. Spotting rounds are already falling in my deployment area, and it's not going to be long until the American observers correct onto target. To speed up the attack on the orchard, when my second tank platoon arrives at the 5 minute mark, I send them off to the right where they can get another angle. This also opens up some angles on the high ground in the right rear of the map, which I couldn't see to begin with due to the orchard. Extending to the right certainly brings a reaction from the Americans. Something starts plinking a low-caliber AT rounds off the front of one of my Panzer IVs. 
this doesn't seem to bother the tank too much. It's probably a 37mm AT gun like we saw in the last mission, but my half tracks are considerably less well armoured and they're going to be very vulnerable. I had been toying with the idea of bypassing the orchard entirely to save time, but that would mean sending my mounted Panzer Grenadiers out into the open where they will be easy prey to the Americans' rapid firing low caliber AT assets. The currently offending 37mm gun is proving difficult to spot. Another advantage of low calibers over high calibers is that they usually have a weaker muscle flash and kick up less dust. So even screened with the Panzers, I'm not confident I'd be able to spot, engage, suppress and destroy any AT guns up there before holes start appearing in my 251s. In other words, I'm going to have to move in and clear out the orchard to advance on the river without exposing myself unnecessarily. The forward edge of the enemy platoon in there certainly looks to have crumbled already, and the Panzers have shot up some trucks behind it, so it's time to go in. Supported by other half-tracks firing on either side, one squad rushes forward to the closest building. The front of this has been shot in by the Panzers, making access easy, and the squad can hide behind it if they encounter resistance. In the same turn, the 37mm gun plinking my Panzer IV is finally spotted, up on the high ground by the right map edge. Now I can deal with it. Before I can take it out though, it manages to put a round through the top turret armour of a Panzer IV. This kills the commander, prompting the crew to have an understandable freakout and reverse away. It seems like a lucky shot, but obviously I should treat 37mm guns in elevated positions with a little bit more respect. Before I can get some revenge, bigger problems arrive on the skyline. M10 tank destroyers. The first to show itself rolls over the ridge left of the villa, thankfully not spotting my orchard focused half tracks through a keyhole in the riverbank trees. Even more luckily, it's quickly picked up by one of my Panzer IVs on the left, which hits it with an AP round. This strikes the bottom right corner of the M10's gun mantlet, killing the commander and the loader. The M10 quickly slams on the brakes, pops smoke, and backs off. There are more of them coming online though, one to the right of the villa, one next to the crossroads along with a light tank contact which is probably a Stuart, and then one on the right ridge rolling into the tree line. This is a bit of a game changer. Light anti-tank guns and infantry carried rifle grenades are very much a short range or fluke problem to deal with. The 3 inch guns on the M10s are a different proposition, being a significant threat to everything I have on the field. As if that wasn't bad enough, the Pioneer platoon arrived at the end of the last turn and I forgot to move them forward. The enemy artillery is now firing for effect where they popped in and one of the incoming shells gets lucky, dropping in the top of one. There are no survivors, and the two remaining squads sweat out the rest of the minutes under artillery fire before I can dash them out of the danger area. The rest of my forward Panzer Grenadier platoon rushes forward as well. The risk of infantry contact in the orchard is now infinitely preferable to hanging around in the open with the M10s watching. The edge of the orchard is clear and they quickly move in, mopping up a handful of stragglers as they go. So the anticipated drama in the orchard never materialises. Instead it's all going on out in the fields as the Panzers and the M10s duke it out. The M10 on the right is spotted and quickly hit once in the lower hull before being hit a bit higher as it tries to reverse away. This shot knocks it out and the crew bail into the woods but the Americans rapidly even the score. My extension to the right has left two Panzer IVs exposed to the American position at the crossroads beyond the bridge. From here, an unseen 37mm gun targets one of the Panzers and manages to get a lucky shot into the thinner top hull armour just underneath the main gun. This kills the driver and does enough damage to write the tank off, the surviving crew bailing out. The other Panzer IV was drawing a bead on the M10 at the crossroads and agonisingly lost sight of it in the dust just before firing. It never reacquires, and the M10 gets a shot off that penetrates the Panzer IV's gun mantlet, killing the entire turret crew and setting it on fire. A minute later, the Company 2IC's tank spots the M10 below the villa on the left. 
its first two shots are on target but intercepted by trees and while the M10 reacts and manages to get a shot down range it's far too high. The Panzer IV follows up and scores a penetration on the upper front hull. When the dust clears the M10 is sitting empty and abandoned, hatches open. 2 to 3 isn't a bad exchange rate when I've got a significant numerical advantage. I now have 10 Panzer IVs and 3 Stugs against what I think is one M10 and maybe a Stuart, plus any surviving 37mm AT guns, but I'm not exactly happy with these engagements. I don't have any hull down positions to hide behind, my tanks are all out in the open overlooked by the enemy and it's probably only the fact that the M10s were moving into position and weren't sat waiting for me that saw me come out on top here. I don't want to extend right again into the open, so my approach is now pretty much limited to a line through the orchards to the bridge, directly towards the crossroads on the high ground that looks like the keystone of the American defence. On the plus side, the close orchard is definitely clear, there are no signs of anything more dangerous than a few stragglers in the next orchard along, and the gap in the riverbank trees around the bridge represents a keyhole that will limit my exposure as I move up. Yet again though, I need to get a move on. We're already 15 minutes in, and the remaining 20 don't make for a lot of time to smash the crossroads, cross the river, and assault four objectives in or behind the woods and orchards. The need for speed continues to make me take risks. It'll take a few turns to get some Panzer Grenadiers into the far orchard to make sure it's clear. I don't think I have the time, so in go the Stokes. I want them in that position to cover off a bit of the right ridge and potentially engage the centre M10. Luckily they roll under the trees without encountering any opposition. One of them immediately spots the American tank destroyer as it stops on the far edge of the orchard. The M10 spots something too and turns its turret, but the Stug is already pointing the right way and gets the first shot off. This penetrates the M10's gun mantlet, though it looks like the crew are okay. They pop smoke and start to reverse off, only for another shot to penetrate the other side of the gun mantlet before they can disappear. The M10 looks to be still up and running, though I'm pretty confident the main gun is out of action. That's the main threat up there neutralised, but I'm starting to spot more elements up at that crossroads. There's definitely another 37mm AT gun and a 60mm mortar on either side, plus an M7 Priest. The Priest is a self-propelled artillery piece, not something that's really supposed to be on the front line, but I'm sure that 105mm gun comes with some heat rounds capable of knocking out anything I've got. There's also still a Stuart up there, which kills two Panzer Grenadiers with a 37mm HG shell as they move up, so plenty to be wary of in the centre, but I have a plan for that. Earlier on I cancelled the 105 missions I had dropping on the high ground to preserve their smoke, and now it starts to drop in all over that central position, totally blinding the American defenders. At the same time, my on map 81mm mortars start to drop bombs in on the same position. This is looking to have good effect, scoring some near misses amongst the American foxholes, when suddenly there's a huge explosion inside the smoke. One of the 81mm HE bombs has found the open-topped priest by random chance and detonated its entire ammunition load. That should shake the survivors at the crossroads up a bit, even as my force moves up closer under cover of the smoke. I have three thrusts moving in. On the left, the Pioneer platoon is dismounted at the riverbank, spreading out and wading across. In the centre, the lead Stug is already crossing the bridge, supported by Panzer IVs, while my reserve Panzer Grenadier platoon waits behind the orchard to exploit in its heart tracks. On the right, the three surviving tanks of my reinforcing Panzer platoon have rushed across the field, screened by the smoke, to the ford where, after getting bogged in the muddy banks a few times, they push up the slope towards the right-hand objective. My main focus is the centre though. With the lead Stug and a Panzer IV across with no trouble whatsoever, the half-tracks follow them up, rushing across the bridge and plunging into the smoke to drop off their Panzer Grenadiers at the edge of the orchard in the centre. Pushing in over abandoned foxholes, I can send my troops left or right from here towards the third or second objectives respectively. They don't encounter any resistance in the smoke, but that's not going to last very long. 
The tanks on the right storm the first objective, crawling into the tree line. Again, this is risky, but the Americans seem to have abandoned the wood line. Breaking through, however, I've been overly aggressive with one of the Panzer IVs, and it runs into swarms of GIs who have fled onto the reverse slope. The tank gets hammered by rifle grenades and hand grenades at close range. The crew bail out after a penetrating hit and are quickly gunned down, while the other two tanks lay into an 81mm mortar position dug into the field. This puts something of a crimp in my intention to swing through the right to support the attack on the crossroads, and as the smoke clears, more threats begin to emerge. The immediate vicinity of the crossroads and the centre orchard is surprisingly clear. The steward I was expecting to reappear, having been wiped out by the detonation of the priest, but there's a mostly untouched second line of resistance on the high ground behind the crossroads, and more GIs are set up in the buildings of Objective 3, who quickly take my Panzer Grenadiers under fire. At the same time, the M10 from the far left reappears. It's not clear whether its main gun is out of action, and despite having a perfect flanking position on a swarm of half-tracks stacking up in the centre, it seems to be having a bit of a panic, but I still have to regard it as a serious threat. Luckily, one of the Panzer IVs spots and nails it before it can do anything. Moving the lead stug up to help with the positions behind the crossroads reveals a second Stuart that had probably been shooting at the flank of my Panzer IVs on the right. The Stuart spots the stug and gets a couple of shots off, but the stug calmly blows it away with its 75mm gun. By this point, there are only five minutes left, and although I'm a lot closer and I've secured the first objective, I've still got to find a way to break into and clear the other three in the face of the first real resistance of the game. The solution is massed firepower, but actually bringing it to bear is tricky. Pounding the enemy positions at the villa behind the orchard and behind the crossroads is just about doable, but exploiting it to get infantry forward to clear those areas in such a short time is a lot less straightforward. With only a couple of minutes left and few signs that the enemy are breaking where it counts, again I need to take some risks to get the job done. On the left, after blasting the villa and its outbuildings with the panzers, I send one of the MG sections up in their half-track. I don't expect them to clear the building, or even necessarily getting sided, but I want to establish a presence in the objective area, and the half-track should give them the speed to get in there while keeping them safe from all the small arms fire zipping around. It's not going to keep them safe from rifle grenades though, and as the half-track loses speed negotiating some empty foxholes, one plucky GI in the villa gets his off through a window. It's a good hit, wiping out most of the passengers. The driver's killed too, and the vehicle jerks to a stop while the gunner ducks down and takes over. The two surviving MG team members bail out during the pause and go for the objective as the half-track reverses off. At the same time, Panzer Grenadiers storm the farmhouse in Objective 3. They've gotten close with the help of direct fire from the tanks, and find a building full of dead and wounded GIs. They quickly mop up, securing the objective. And the final point to take at the crossroads is stickier. Again, with time running out, I risk a rush by half-track. This pays off, and the Panzer Grenadiers inside are able to dismount into the objective itself, but there's a second priest just over the crest from them. The scratch plan in the last minute of the game is to maintain a toehold in the objective with most of the squad and split off an AT team with rifle grenades to drive the priest away, but it all goes wrong. A half-track off to the left guns down the AT team leader and pins them before they can achieve anything. While the rest of the squad consolidates, they come under fire from the rear an as yet unspotted American medium machine gun back on the ridge starts shooting them in the back. In the last few seconds of the game, a few stray shots hit their half track, causing the driver to have a freak out and try to get away, turning into the squad as some of the soldiers move up the slope to take cover in the foxholes. This drives them up over the crest, where the priest spots them and blows them away with a 105mm shell, catching the half track in the blast and knocking it out as well. With that, the game ends. I've run out of time, but I've managed to secure a tactical victory. The only points on the table for both sides were the four Occupy objectives. I've managed to completely clear and occupy the first and fourth, giving me a thousand victory points. 
and managed to deny the enemy the second and third, leaving the defenders with no points at all. In terms of casualties, I've lost 35 dead and 23 wounded, along with 4 Panzer IVs and a half-track. The bulk of the casualties come from risks taken in the final assault, and it'll remain to be seen what impact those losses and the amount of high explosive ammunition I've expended will come back to bite me in a campaign with no replacements or resupply. The enemy has, at least, suffered much more heavily, with 112 dead, 52 wounded, 3 men taken prisoners, 5 tanks lost, plus a priest and a handful of trucks and jeeps. But it wasn't like this was a total walkover. Defended river crossings are always tough, especially under time pressure, which I was really feeling in this one. Like in the last mission, this campaign is really forcing me out of my comfort zone and making me take risks that I wouldn't normally. Sometimes these pay off, sometimes they don't. I did have one advantage that wasn't present in the historical battle though. Back in 1943, the Americans had blown the bridge and the Germans got no further down the corridor. Courtesy of the campaign designer, we're now in uncharted counterfactual territory as we punch through into the beachhead. Hope you all enjoyed this one. I'll catch you in the next video.